All right, you guys, how's everybody doing today? Give me just a second here. Make sure I was having some connectivity issues with my internet, but thank goodness for ethernet. Okay, can y'all see me? Can y'all hear me? I wanna make sure. Okay, good, good, good. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Hope you guys are doing good today. So it's been a long week, I know. A lot of people have been looking for me since I did my stream on Drake and um, Kendrick Lamar and all that stuff, but a lot of stuff happened last week, so I just could not go live. I did not have the energy and I couldn't um, do any videos. Uh, one of my Discord members ended up passing away and she's one of the OGs on our Discord. She's been, she'd been in there from day one, since 2020, so over four years we had gotten to know her and she ended up passing away that Sunday. Um, so her mom let us know. So that's why I wasn't available all last week to do any content. It was just a lot. I just mainly just stayed in the Discord. So put a blue heart in the chat for Miss Scully B. And um, the last time I spoke to her, she had sent a super chat like two weeks ago. She's the one who had asked me if I had heard the whole Meek Mill and Diddy. AI and I started talking about it. So that was her. So yeah, she passed away. So yeah, last week was hard, but we all came together. We got a chance to go to her virtual funeral on Zoom. So thank you to everybody who attended. So that's where I've been for everybody who's not in Discord, who's like, where where did you go? Um, I've been dealing with that, you know. So it's it's it was a very emotional week for me last week. So there was no way I could have came on live or did anything. I couldn't even get out of bed the first three days. So yeah, so rest in peace to her and just thank you. Shout out to all my Discord members. Like I told y'all, it's like family. So um, just thank y'all for being there, not only for me, but for each other. That means a lot to me. So um, it has been a lot going on though, uh, just to segue into something a little bit lighter. It's been a lot going on right now in the rap world. As you guys know, it's been literally diss after diss. Everybody wants the smoke. Um, you know, it's been a lot. So I woke up Sunday morning. I think Marquis was like the first one to text me, her, and then my other homeboy texted me. And everybody was like, did you just hear what Chris Brown just dropped? And, you know, I've heard Chris Brown, you know, go back and forth with Quavo before, but... When I tell you this diss track that he dropped on Sunday, I wasn't expecting that. Like, it was insane. So I know a lot of people have wanted me to, like, kind of break it down, like how I did the whole um, Drake situation. So we're going to definitely do that. But, yeah, that was a crazy diss track. But I kind of want to go and kind of, like, break down, like, the backstory because a lot of people are thinking that it came out of nowhere. And Quavo and Chris Brown have been going back and forth for years, ever since Karuchi left Chris Brown um, and then she was spotted with Quavo. And this all goes back to like 2017. So if you guys remember, the reason why Karuchi and Chris Brown broke up is because Chris Brown got her friend pregnant. Uh, Royalty's mama was hanging out with Karuchi and Chris Brown back in the day. And um, she wound up pregnant. Let me go ahead and share my screen real quick with y'all. Yeah, no, I don't forget shit. So this is how everything started. So I don't know why Chris is so upset, but this is how it all started. <coughs> Excuse me. So in these pictures, we see Chris Brown, we see Karuchi, and then that's Nina. That's the Royalties Bay Mama. They were all hanging out, um, having a good old funky time. And so Chris Brown ends up getting her pregnant. Let me see. I had another... Okay, here we go. Let me share this tab. So he ends up getting her pregnant, but you see they were all friends hanging out. So eventually Karuchi woke up and she realized her self-worth. And so she ended up sending out this tweet. And she says, listen, one can only take so much. The best of luck to Chris and his family. No baby drama for me. So she basically broke up with Chris Brown publicly. This was back in 2017. And so that was the end of that for the most part. 
And then what ended up happening is that basically all of a sudden we start seeing Karuchi with um, Quavo. This was back in 2017. Let me pull up my little screens here. And of course I have like 50 million screens up. I'm trying to find the one with the two of them. But um, so they're out kicking it. Here it is. Okay. So they're out kicking it. They're being spotted. This was back in 2017. And so Chris Brown, who's very controlling, was not feeling that. He did not like the fact that, okay, fine. If you want to move on, you can move on. But how dare you move on with, you know, another high profile guy. So this was her with Quavo. You see Offset in the background. It was back in 2017, taking pictures together. So they hadn't really been seen since then. And if you guys also remember, um, Chris Brown and the Migos got into it at the BET Awards back in 2017 as well. Um, Chris Brown wanted to fight Quavo, uh, take off, and Offset was like, you know what I'm saying, one for all, all for one. You're not about to fight him. If you fight him, we're jumping in. So it was just a bunch of mess that happened um, at the BET Awards, and then it ended up spilling into the parking lot. So we're going to go ahead and watch this really quick here. Okay, so that was, that was back in 2017 when all that stuff went down. So we haven't seen Quavo and um, Karuchi together in years. And then all of a sudden in 2022, they go on some type of birthday vacation together. So Karuchi was spotted out on a date with Quavo, um, reuniting dating rumors. They were spotted at a dinner date. And then they also went to like some birthday rafting together, right? So this was in 2022. And so all of a sudden, we all thought everything was done, okay? Um, Chris Brown has like three or four kids. You know, he should be focusing on himself. Then he decided to diss Quavo in another song. So before this song even came out that just dropped over the weekend, he had diss Quavo in another song. Let me pull this up here. Okay, so this song was called Freak, and it had, like, Jerna Lucas on there. Um, but in the second verse, Chris Brown comes in. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. We're going to do the bigger screen, I think. Yeah, okay. So this was the initial song. Now, this came out, I want to say, like, just, like, a few weeks ago. It wasn't that long ago um, that this came out. So this was called um, Freak. So in the in this um, verse, he says this. He says, okay, now fucking my old bitches ain't gonna make us equal. Sipping on that 1942, cause I don't do no Quavo. Freak bitch says she like Casamigos, not the Migos. I don't fuck with bougie bitches. I don't fuck with bougie bitches. Man, that shit is hype. I forgot to pull out, now she got me for life. So that is a, a straight up shot at Quavo. Um, saying that he's sipping on the 1942, saying that, you know, everybody loves Casamigo the drink, but she doesn't like the Migos. And then you guys remember the Migos' most popular song was Bad and Bougie, and he's saying he don't fuck with bougie bitches, that it's all hype, that he basically, you know what I'm saying, has sex with a chick, and now she got him for life. And I think that was kind of a shot at Karuchi as well, um, because he got Karuchi's friend pregnant. So I think that was kind of like a shot at both of them. And then... Um, he goes on to say, she said we should bring a friend and I ain't think about it twice. I'm going to kick her ass out if she don't do some shit that I like. She just want a couple Birkins and some CC belts. I'm trying to set her up because she don't need no help. If you don't like to listen, baby, you going to cheat yourself. Man, I had to eat the pussy. It ain't going to eat itself. Bars. <laughs> Facts is not going to eat itself. I'm just saying. Um, so when that hit the internet, a lot of folks was like, what is he mad about? Like, this whole Karuchi thing, you ain't been with her in so long, and if you really wanted to be with her, why did you get Nina pregnant? So it had a lot of people confused as to, like, why he was so upset 
still at Quavo. So then after that, Quavo decided to respond back. Now this was just 10 days ago. So he responded back with a song named um, Tender and he had posted it on his IG page. So this was on his page. He didn't have any comments on it. He had over 100,000 likes and it was called Tender. So he dropped that song and in that song, he was really going at Chris. So he was saying things in there like, you know, don't beat her up. It must be the drugs. And so Chris Brown was not feeling that at all. So let me just go ahead. Um, okay, so here goes some of the lyrics right in here. It says, you did the bitch wrong, now the bitch gone. She posted with a thug, called the bitch phone. She ain't, she won't come home. Don't beat her up, it must be the drugs. Need to cross out your plug. So that's what, uh, excuse me, Quavo was saying about Chris Brown because what I'm assuming is when he was with Karuchi, Chris Brown kept trying to call and get her back. And at that point, she was over it. You know, like I always tell y'all, it's one thing to cheat, but once a baby's involved, there's no way to like play that off because that child is always going to be a reminder of the, a reminder of the affair. So at that point, Karuchi was like, no, I'm done. So Quavo's making fun of that. And so, um, I mean, it was okay. Tinder wasn't bad. You know, I don't look at Quavo as some type of battle rapper, but it was an okay song. So then all of a sudden, that's when Chris Brown dropped his song this weekend, um, Weakest Link. And when I tell you, when I first listened to it, it's like my mouth just dropped open. Like every single bar was insane. Chris Brown literally went harder than half of these so-called, you know, male rappers out here. He made no apologies. He did not give a fuck what came out of his mouth. He kept it all the way real. I think he literally, I'm going to keep it real with you. I feel like Weakest Link is this generation's hit him up. I think that's how hard it went. I'm not saying it's the same as hit him up. I'm not putting him on the same level as Tupac. But I'm saying for this generation, I got the same feeling when I heard Weakest Link. I got when I was 16, when I was 15, 16, when Hit Em Up came out. I was just shocked because like nobody had ever dissed like that that I remember. I mean, granted, there was no Vaseline, but I was a baby when that came out, so that doesn't count <laughs> for all the grandpas out there. Like, what about no Vaseline? That wasn't my era. My era was Hit Em Up. So for me, I, I got a 90s vibe. Thank you. A lot of y'all felt that too. I got a 90s vibe from this. This was like this generation, like Gen Z and Gen Alpha, whatever. This is y'all's hit em up to me. Like that's how hard it went. So we're gonna go ahead and break down these damn lyrics. He went hard, I'm sorry, he did. I was embarrassed for the whole crew. I'm like, damn, this motherfucker ain't got no chill. Okay, so let me share this. So we're gonna go ahead and get, get started. Who wants smoke with me? Who wants smoke with me? Who wants smoke with me? Who wants smoke with C? So he's like setting it up. You know what I mean? I, I just, I still was not expecting him to go in like he did. So he says, okay, let's get down to the facts, pussy. I'm dripped in red. Don't let this R&B shit fool you. Niggas get ripped to shreds. Quavo talking like he a thug nigga use a bitch with dreads. So that's in response to Quavo's bar when he was saying that, Car that Carucci left Chris Brown for a real thug. So then he says, can't wait to see the day that you back that shit up. Hold on. Can't wait to see the day that you back up all the shit you said. What's all this boss shit you talking? You ain't honcho, nigga. You the weakest link out of your clique. Let's keep it a hundo, nigga. You fucked my ex hoe and that's cool. I don't give a fuck, little nigga. Because I still fucked your ex when you was still with her. Bitch, I'm up, little nigga. So basically, he's talking about, okay, fine. You know, you got with Karuchi, you fucked her. You know, who gives a fuck? But while you was with your girlfriend, I smashed her. Then he goes on to say, they say revenge is sweet. Now think about that shit. Don't let that line go over your head. I might just sing about that shit. I had her feeling about that dick. There's, sm uh, there's something sweet about that shit. I got some tea about that bitch, but I ain't gonna speak about that shit. So at that point, he says the word sweet. Meaning he's talking about Sweetie. And as we all know, Sweetie was with Quavo for quite a bit of time. So he's saying that, you know, while you was dating Sweetie, I was fucking her. And while I was fucking her, she was feeling all types of tea. She was feeling for the pain, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, I, I can see this being true. Because I remember a while back when everybody was talking about Sweetie getting with Little Baby. 
And I try to give her grace, you know, people was matching up them black jeans in the picture with little baby's jeans and stuff like that. And then remember when Quavo, the last song that he did with uh, Takeoff, he was talking about, you know what I'm saying, how Sweetie cheated on him. You know, he was throwing shots at her. So a lot of us assumed it was about little baby, but maybe it was really about Chris Brown. So that is what Chris is insinuating. Then he goes on to say this. He says, um, I ain't playing chess with a checker player. I'm a ticking time bomb on the detonator. I shit on you niggas like I'm a defecator. I put Amigo on a ventilator. Whew. That shit was crazy when he says he'll put Amigo on a ventilator. Then he says, stop talking about beating girls. You was beating bitches in elevators. We seen the tapes. That's devastating. You doing bad. You a bitch and your music is trash. So basically he's saying here, if you guys remember that video, it didn't have any audio of Sweetie in the elevator with Quavo. And something happened, they were fighting. She kept trying to take his Call of Duty box and Quavo was like, you know, they were kind of tussling at each other. And a lot of people are saying, well, who's Chris Brown to talk? You know, bitch, you put your hands on Rihanna. You don't put hands on Karuchi, you're violent. But the reason why Chris Brown is saying this is because Quavo brought it up first. Quavo was talking about Chris Brown beating bitches. So he's replying back to Quavo and saying, don't talk about me beating bitches. We all know I whooped a few bitches asses. My name ain't beat them down Chris Brown for no reason. But hey, before you, you know, throw some stones at me, uh, you better revert back to that fucking elevator tape, bitch. We done seen you putting hands on Sweetie too. So that's what that was. He's not just saying it just to be saying he's replying back to Quavo because Quavo brought up the fact that Crispy beating bitches up. So I'm just saying, I'm just the messenger that breaks shit down, okay? So um, then he goes on to say, Fashion Week they had, hold on, Fashion Week they set me by your lame ass. I was truly mad. All that I kept thinking was about breaking your face but I gave you a pass. You lucky I don't want to fuck the money up, boy. I would have broke you in half. Quit trying to be tough. You ain't like that. Why you keep showing off? Quit talking about drugs. The only pack I've been smoking on. You the only pack I've been smoking on. So in this verse, basically he's saying, if you guys remember during fashion week, I don't know who did this. I think they were trying to be funny because everybody knows him and Quavo don't get along. So they ended up sitting next to each other um, during Fashion Week. And this is kind of what popped off a lot of this stuff, too. Let me see if I can find the initial picture here. Okay. Let me see. They had them sitting next to each other. And so a lot of people were taking that as growth. You know, people were like, oh, you know, this is awesome. You know, Chris Brown and Quavo, they're putting, you know, they're letting the past be the past. They've both grown up. And so Chris Brown comes out and he basically shuts that down. I'm trying to find the tweet. Oh, hold on. I got music playing. I'm trying to find the tweet where he goes in. And basically, like, long story short, like, Chris Brown is basically saying, like, there's no growth. They sat us next to each other, and I'm not trying to fuck up my bag. That's basically what he said in the tweet. Because some people were assuming, uh, were insinuating that, oh, they're cool again. And he was letting it be known that, no, we're not cool. I still don't like this dude. Um, and they just sat us there. So that's what he's saying in that lyric, is that basically he's not about to fuck up a bag. And he wanted so bad to, like, break his face. So once again, you know, being violent. <laughs> so um, then he goes on to say this. He says... Hold up, where we at? Where we at? Okay, then he said, okay, so then that part about the drugs, quit talking about drugs, you the only pack I'm smoking on because once again in Quavo's lyrics, he was talking about, you know, Chris Brown getting high, putting hands on women. So he's saying the only drugs I do is smoking on you, basically. Then he goes on to say, your last album was a weed tray. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. Your last album was a retray, was a weed tray, just some bullshit that we roll up on. You know it's sign. Put you to bed night, night like Sudafed. Show me that I'm tender, bitch. It's time to prove what you said. So again, because Quavo's song towards Chris Brown was called Tender. So he's saying, okay, you want to call me tender? You know what I'm saying? Step up and prove yourself. Show me that I'm tender, basically. 
Um, then he says, RIP to take off. He the only real one that got true respect. Crazy when he died, everybody really wished that it was you and said. Oh, shit. Then he says, you tripping, Chris. Don't say that. Don't lose your head. You done turned the big bad wolf on. Fuck these niggas new revenge. Now, when he said that, I'm not going to lie. Like, that had my mouth dropping because, you know, we live in such a sensitive world where people can't say anything and, oh, you're not supposed to talk about the dead and all this stuff. And um, so when he talked about Takeoff's death, Sorry, but he's not lying. As somebody who does commentary, that's all you saw up and down social media was basically everybody saying they wish it would have been Quavo. Quavo started everything. He was trying to be the big, you know, tough guy. And he fucked around and got takeoff shot. And so a lot of people were saying that this is Quavo's fault. You're whack. Takeoff was never involved in beef. He was always in the background. You know, you know, takeoff was a real, real chill dude. Quavo was always trying to be seen. So he's not lying. It may hurt, it may be foul, but did he lie? No. So I was like, damn, I wasn't expecting that. But I, what I will say is this. I also find it very interesting. A lot of people are giving him, you know, props for that line. Like, oh, it's harsh, but he's not lying. And he's talking about the dead. But Nikki also talked about, you know, Meg Thee Stallion's mom, right, who passed away. And, you know, she was very much crucified for that. So sometimes when the women go super low, they get crucified. But when the men go super low, it's bars. I'm just saying. Y'all can get mad all you want to. I'm just saying. The energy was very different. I didn't see a lot of people saying, you know, I saw some people saying it wasn't right. But for the most part, everybody was like, damn, bars, he killed it. He ain't lying. But then, you know, like I said, when Nikki brought up Meg's mom, it, you know, was, it was wrong. And I'm not saying either is right or wrong, but I'm just talking about how the internet reacted. So that's all I'm saying, okay? Uh, then he goes on to say, this is what happens when a fuck nigga push up on a real nigga, when a fuck nigga push a real nigga to the edge. This is what happens when a dumb nigga get fame and it goes to his head. You gonna kiss the ring, nigga, big fuck you with my middle finger. I tattoo my trigger finger. Bring real beef to your dinner table. My mental state ain't never stable. I know this shit gon' sting, nigga. I'll run your ass through the ringer, nigga. You just got body by a singer, nigga, bitch. So that if y'all have not heard that, I'm telling you, that was like just one of the the dopest diss tracks I've heard in a long time. Like that shit went crazy. Like I had to listen to that back at least like 15 times just to like try and get all the bars and like really understand what the hell I'm listening to because he went so hard and he's not lying like people act like he's just some singer but Chris Brown been rapping even before he started singing when he initially tried to be a rapper it didn't work for him maybe he was too young too cute I don't know but he definitely had more of a singer aesthetic so he went the singing route but Chris Brown been rapping Chris Brown been having bars and I think the way he came at Quavo with this it literally put him on the same level as some of these rappers. You know, his bars went way harder than anything I've heard Drake, Kendrick, or J. Cole say towards each other. And that's just keeping it real. And Chris Brown is a singer. So to me, he went way harder on this. So now, you know, everybody's waiting for Quavo because, you know, Quavo had dropped Tinder. So we're waiting for him to pull a Rick Ross and run to the studio. But instead, this is all we got. So Quavo took to social media and he posted this. Are you going to go to the studio, sir? Or are we just going to post a picture of Young Thug in the courtroom? So that is, that's Quavo's response for now. Maybe he's in the studio cooking. I don't know. Hopefully. But I, I don't, I can't, I don't think Quavo even has bars even his cadence, I, I just don't see him. Like, Chris Brown killed that shit. He was articulate. He was witty. He, he went below the belt. Like, there was no mumbling. He, he, like, articulated every single bar. You couldn't have missed what he was saying. And a lot of times with Quavo, not calling him a mumble rapper, but sometimes it is hard to understand what he's rapping. So I, I don't know. I just, we're going to see. Who wants smoke with C, bitch? I don't know. 
He want all the smoke. We going to see. But that, that was Quavo's response. I was like, oh, okay. Now, this was Sweetie's response. So, Sweetie says, who child? Then she posted this meme and said, let me go rewrite these Nani verses. Okay, Sweetie. You might want to sit this one out, too, before he just really goes in on your ass, so... I would sit this out, let this be between the men. If you did nothing wrong, then, you know, move along, sis. But I, I'm sorry, I won't want no smoke with beat him down, Chris Brown, okay? Chris Brown, um, yeah, he damn sure ain't no mumble rapper. Chris Brown went hard. That was probably one of the hardest diss tracks. And he's probably not going to get as much props, like, you know, like if it was Drake or Kendrick or Cole. But he, he, he dropped. He dropped. He did the damn thing. I wasn't expecting that was not on my bingo card. So I don't know what the hell Cat Williams done started. Because remember at the beginning of the year it was all the comedians beefing. You know, Cat Williams was calling out all the comedians, all these comedic beefs. And then it's kind of spiraled from the comedic beefs. Now we got the rappers, the main rappers. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be interesting. So now, um, on top of the whole Chris Brown situation. Now, what I didn't like, what, what kind of annoyed me, because I really wanted the Chris Brown conversation to go longer. I think Chris Brown should have won the whole weekend where people just talked about it. It should have been about this diss between Chris Brown and Quavo. But, of course, Kanye West, you know, had to run and pull a Rick Ross. I, I, I felt like he pulled a Rick Ross, just like how when Drake dropped his diss, everybody was talking about it, folks were feeling it. Then here goes Rick Ross, you know what I'm saying, running, huffing and puffing to the studio to drop something two hours later. It's like, can we, the audience, can we, the fans, just, you know what I'm saying, soak it in, absorb it in, enjoy it? Can you give us a full 24 hours with the new track before y'all run to the studio and divert our attention? So that kind of annoyed me because I'm like, wait, what? Where, where did the hell did Kanye come from? So Kanye decided to respond back to Drake and J. Cole. So this all happened on the same day as Chris Brown and Quavo. So let's go ahead and get to this. Now, if you guys remember my last stream, I broke down Drake's verse where he was going at Kanye. A lot of people missed that. But Drake went at Kanye super hard. And so Kanye came back. He jumped on the remix um, of Like That with uh, Future and Metro Boomin and everybody. So he jumped on the Like That remix, and so he went in. Let me go ahead and pull up the lyrics here. Okay, here we go. All right, so this is the Like That remix. So he says I'm um, here, can't stop, won't stop. I just fucked your bitch in a Sean John tank top. You treat a bad bitch like she's average. I treat a bad bitch like a fat bitch. Should have never let me get money again. I'm my Cat Williams when, when they trying to get funny again. Yeah, you see, they try to count me out like that. We just hit number one and we write back. So basically, he's talking about his new Vultures um, album that dropped and how it was number one without major promotion, um, without the streaming services. So he's talking about that. He says, 500 down on the bottom, 500 down at the top, titanium grills, call that smile on the rocks. And he got that line from, um, give me two pair, I need two pairs so I can get the stomping in my Air Force Ones. He got that from Nelly and the Saint Lunatics, but I thought that was cute. That was cute. Then he says, um, I done had everything that you able to got. I invented drill T I invented drill too. I ain't gonna lie, it was chop. Top my chop, uh big fat chop from Chicago that came out with Chief Keef and all them. So he's basically, you know, paying homage to Chop and the Chicago drill drill people. Um then he goes on to say, let's see here. A another one, volume one. Then it's two and three, vultures on repeat. Still feel like Pablo, drug dealer cheek. Pluto sent the drones. I hit like Metro's beats. It's a rap for niggas. Where's Lucian? You serving your master nigga? So that part was really good. He says, you caught a little bag for your masters, didn't you? Lifetime deal, I feel bad for you niggas. Y'all so out of sight, out of mind. I can't even think of a Drake line. Play J. Cole, get the pussy dry. Play that shit back 130 times. 
So basically in that line, what I liked about this part where he's bringing up Lucian Grange, now you guys know he's like the owner and, you know, the big CEO at UMG. And so he's basically saying that Drake's master, the person who runs Drake, is Lucian Grange. And remember I told you guys last week that Drake had signed a huge deal. I think I said 500 million, but it was closer to 400 million. And he, so he signed a deal that most artists never get. Let me share this. So this was back in 2022. Uh, Drake's new deal with Universal Music Group called a LeBron sized, estimated to be $400 million. So if they're willing to give Drake $400 million, um, a lot, you know, it says a lot that basically, Drake is a puppet for them and you know they're going to they're going to push Drake out there. They're going to make Drake the face of hip hop. And that's kind of what Kanye's saying. He's saying that Lucian Grange is your master. Now, also let's not forget that Lucian Grange is also tied to the sex abuse case with Diddy. Remember, Little Rod was saying that Lucian Grange is also involved in, self, in sex trafficking and a bunch of other stuff that was in that lawsuit. And so Lucian Grange and his, his uh, lawyers, um, they're trying to say that this whole him being tied to the Diddy sex abuse case is not cool. Um, you know, it's reckless and they're going to be taking action. So I find it very interesting that, you know, Kanye is blasting Lucian Grange and Drake is very, very close with him as well. So then he also goes on, I, um, that part about J. Cole makes the coochie dry. I thought that was funny because nobody plays, you know, J. Cole or Jermaine to like dance and twerk. Like that's just, he's more of like a serious artist. And that's when you want to be like, you know, more woke and conscious. And, you know, you just want to listen to some good music with good bars. Like nobody's about to be fucking to J. Cole. I know I'm not. So, uh, so I don't know. That part was funny to me. Like, yeah, nobody's about to turn on that J. Cole. Let's make love to that J. Cole album. Not I. So, <laughs> so I thought that was funny when he said that. Like, yeah, J. Cole make the pussy dry. Yeah, he, he do. That's, nobody's jerking off the J. Cole. We might smash to some Drake music. We might smash to some, you know, Kanye got some, you know, fuckable music. Yeah. Kanye, you know. Yeah, Kanye. Fuck. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> yeah, K-Dot is too. Ain't nobody smashing to Kendrick Lamar either. Let's keep that real. I'm not going to be smashing to King Kunta. <laughs> Kanye plays too much. He's not lying though, like J. Cole, Jermaine, yes, he's a great artist, but yeah, no, no, nobody, yeah. Yeah, slow jams is my jam, honey. I'll smash the slow jam now. I'm like, over in your new way, bring some friends you're cool with, then I'm uh, uh, cool with, then I am you too strip. Oh yeah, she got some light skin friends look like Michael Jackson. Yeah, I probably have smashed the slow jams, to be honest with you. But I'm not going to smash to anything Cole puts out there. I've never been in the band and be like, yeah, play that. <laughs> play no role models. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, he's wrong for that. I'm just saying. Yeah, I said no one ever. But now, if, you know, if we're, if we're driving around, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, just kicking it, we'll listen to J. Cole in the car, but. Poetic Justice by Kendrick Lamar. That's not, I like Poetic Justice by Kendrick, but that, I don't, I don't, I've, I've personally never smashed to that. I mean, it's cute. I just, you know, when you think about like smashing music, like Kendrick and J. Cole do not come to mind ever. And I'd be offended if somebody was like, yeah, I'm gonna turn on that J. Cole and, and hit that ass. Like, no the fuck you're not, sir. <laughs> Nobody is smashing to Jermaine. So, yeah, no, Kanye was funny for that one. I liked that. He's not lying. Nobody, yeah, nobody's smashing to Jermaine Cole at all. <laughs> he got bars. He got good music. But, like, he's not lying about that part. So, I thought that was funny. That was, like, a little funny, you know, jab from Kanye. So, you know, everybody was definitely, um, you know, laughing about that part. And, you know, they really liked Kanye's diss. So it's going to be interesting to see if Drake comes back again at Kanye. Now, over the weekend also, or was this Friday? This might have been Friday. 
So Drake also dropped another diss track. So he did a second diss track. And I'm going to say, because I've been wanting to know how I felt about it, especially being that, you know, I'm a Pac fan and he was using the whole Tupac AI. I'll say this. I feel like something is weird about the whole thing. I definitely feel like Universal, um, UMG, and, and all these people are definitely like, hyping up Drake. They're making sure he has access to certain things that other rappers don't have a lot of access to. I will say that creatively, it was a very creative track with him basically using Tupac's voice because as we all know, when Kendrick had that song, I believe it was Mortal Man, he's having a conversation with Tupac on that song. And so a lot of people act like Kendrick Lamar is a West Coast savior. So I thought it was kind of, it was really dope how he kind of did it where it's like, you know, Ken, where Tupac is talking to Kendrick, like, come on, you know, you're the savior of the West Coast. You got to get this light-skinned nigga from, Ken, uh, from Canada. Um, you know, you can't let him get away with this. So I thought that was really interesting. And then you hear Snoop Dogg come in, the Snoop Dogg AI. Now, I will say this. I feel like the part that I thought was really dope was the fact that Drake kind of pulled an Eminem 8 Mile. Remember when Eminem was getting ready to do the final battle against, um, I can't think of the other guy, Clarence, and his parents got a real good marriage. That guy, right? He basically used everything that he was about to say about Eminem. He used that against him. But I know something you don't know. You went to Cranbrook. That's a private school. Then he, then he's like, you know, I know everything this pussy's going to say against me. Why am I thinking about all these eight mile tracks? But that's what it reminded me of because Drake even talked about how he's constantly linked to young girls because that's one of the main things that people can say about Drake is his relationship with Millie Bobby Brown, who was 14 at the time. Well, friendship. I don't want to say relationship. But the fact that he was like in her DMs or he was, she had said that Drake was texting her. And Drake has been attached to a lot of younger girls. So it seemed like he was pulling the whole eight mile thing where I'm going to diss myself. I'm going to put all my shit on the table, you know what I'm saying, and own up to my stuff. And then let's see what else you have besides that. So I thought that was clever, even though he took it from a movie. I still thought it was a clever move. Um, but as far as the whole AI thing, I feel like this is like the next chapter. I feel like at this point, these major labels, because again, rap is dying. The, the music industry is not making money like they once made. So I think they're trying to use Drake as a way to push in this whole AI situation. Um, because let's also not forget, they're also about to start their own social media platform. The labels are. So now if you want to dance to you know, TikTok songs, right? Because that's how a lot of music was going viral was because of TikTok. But they felt like TikTok was taking too much of the bag and it wasn't fair. So now they've taken all the music off of TikTok. So, well, everybody that, you know, that's under Universal, they've taken everything off of TikTok and they're about to start their own social media platform where now you can come to our platform and dance and rap to our music. And I think what they're also going to do for this generation is, oh, do you want to sound like Taylor Swift? Well, now you can use AI and you can sing just like Taylor. So now instead of you dancing like a robot, you can sound like an AI bot, right? I really feel like that's like the next step. So I, I'm very mixed about this. While I feel like it was creative, I also feel like I don't like it. I don't like the fact that AI is not being brought into hip hop and especially beefs. And maybe I'm just old school, you know what I'm saying? I'm used to people going into the booth, either writing some stuff, freestyling. Like, I don't need you bringing back the dead. It was clever, but it's like, I just kind of felt like it, it just kind of cheapened it. Just rap, just rap. Go into the booth and spit your bars. You know, so I really didn't like that. And then, you know, you had Snoop Dogg coming out, speaking about it, looking like somebody's auntie, acting like, oh, you know, I'm going to bed. Like, he really didn't want to say too much. And I feel like he didn't want to say too much because he knew, he knows damn well they cut him a check. Let's keep it real. He knew that that was going to come out. He was told in advance. He probably didn't want to lend his voice to it because he didn't want to act like he's picking sides, right? And he wouldn't have lended his voice to Canadian Drake because Snoop Dogg is so West Coast. But I'm sure that Snoop Dogg knew something about it in advance. 
Universal is not going to risk using Snoop Dogg's voice and likeness and risk a lawsuit. So I feel like Snoop, who will do anything for a bag, let's not forget he was selling Kim Card, him and his family selling, you know, uh, skims. So Snoop will do anything for a bag. So that's why I feel like he didn't have a whole lot to say. Because if it was something that Drake did that he was so unaware of, he would have been snapping because he, he'd he have been like, why did he get my money? I need my check. They money are fun. The money is funny in the industry. He was selling skims. Don't have me pull the receipts, child. Let me see if I can find Snoop's family skims. And this was after he had dissed Kim Kardashian. Ah, Titi don't forget shit. Who remembers this? Go ahead and share my screen. This you? Snoop Dogg and fa an entire family front Skims Holiday 2022 campaign. He even got the grandbabies in there. Them little, the little, little light-skinned babies and the little grandbabies. He got the whole family in this Skims campaign. I don't forget shit. Okay? And this was after he dissed Kim and Kanye. So, as we... Uncle Snoop would do anything for a bag. So, I refuse to believe that Snoop Dogg did not know anything... And that Drake just, you know, used his lightness and voice. No. He knew in advance. And he allowed it. He wasn't going to lend his real voice to it. Because, again, he's, you know, the uncle of the West Coast. So he can't be seen siding with Drake. But if he allows Drake and Universal to use his lightness, then he can kind of play it off. Like, well, I, I, you, know, I mean, you got nothing to do with me. It's AI. But he got a bag. Trust me. Uncle Snoop ain't about to let you use his likeness or nothing. You're going to give him a check. That man be selling everything. Liquor, do-rags, scarves, pajamas, blunt wrappers, hot pockets. <laughs> so I don't believe that Snoop didn't know this wasn't coming out. I refuse to believe that, you know, Drake just used... Snoop's voice in AI and he, he didn't cut him a check. Oh, Snoop got a check. Trust and believe. He's not going to come out and admit it. But if you really think about it, he got a check. He was paid. Universal's not going to just let that roll out. Um, and also whoever is handling, you know, Tupac and Afeni Shakur's estate, I'm sure they allowed it as well. So I think that this is, um, somebody said Masterpiece Cereal. Oh, yeah, the cereal too. Yeah, Snoop Dogg sells anything. I mean, he had his mom on a box of pancake mix. So um, I feel like this is where we're going in hip hop. Um, I feel like Universal and Drake. Drake is one of the biggest artists out there, him and Taylor Swift. And I also find it very interesting that in the diss, he mentions Taylor Swift as well, who was also getting ready to drop an album, right? And in that album, she's dissing Kim Kardashian. Isn't it funny that two of the biggest mainstream artists, because Drake is a very mainstream rapper. Taylor is one of the biggest mainstream artists. They're both with Universal. They both have very close relationships with Lucian Grange. Taylor doesn't like Kim, who was once married to Kanye. Drake has beef with Kanye. And Drake is shouting Taylor Swift out in his diss track. So I feel like the, the record labels are definitely behind pushing him and Taylor and pushing the narrative. And matter of fact, what just happened, what just broke about 30 minutes ago, this is what I was reading before I even came on live. This just broke. Let me share my screen. Yay's Like That Remix removed from YouTube. That just happened about 23 minutes, probably an hour, because I... This is frozen in place, but they removed it. It's off of YouTube. Somebody says, Champagne Bussy and his rich baby daddy, Lucian Grange, are behind this. Let me go ahead and hit this with a heart, because I'm messy. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely, I people are saying it. Drake Universal took this down. So a lot of people are saying Drake called his daddy real quick to take it down. 
So something is going on in the industry. Just proves Kanye's point that Drake's rich baby daddy took it down. The Jays caught some Jays. Hey, all I know that is young J population be wearing nothing but Yeezys. But I've never seen them in Nocha. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Censorship at its finest. How can you get hit with a copyright when the creators of the songs invited you on the feature? So something is going on in the industry. Something is going on. Um, Drake and his rich baby daddy got a lot of power. And they're hyping up Taylor Swift. I, I feel like there's more to all of this stuff that's going on in the industry. Um, I feel like there's a reason, like I've been telling y'all, there's a reason why a lot of these black American artists are upset that this biracial Canadian is the face of American hip hop. And we all know Kanye's issue. Um, oh, somebody says, hold on. Nocha is Drake's name for his shoes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Cause I didn't know what that meant. Um, and I feel like, you know, because they put so much money into Drake, they gave him $400 million. You don't get that type of money from the record labels without there, there's more to it there's more behind the scenes going on so it might be situations where they want drake because he's more palatable to be the face of american hip-hop and anybody who's trying to stand in his way of that they're going to get rid of him and make it very very hard for them so it's going to be interesting it's going to be really interesting to see like just how all this plays out but yeah that just broke that his music was removed from youtube so now, let me see here. Now, a lot of people were also saying things like, um, it's not right. J. Cole keeps catching strays. J. Cole didn't do anything. J. Cole, like I've been telling you, all of these people subliminally diss each other. If you listen to their music, you're able to put two and two together. Jermaine is not innocent in this at all, okay? Um, you guys know I call him Jermaine. Jermaine has been throwing shots at Kanye for years. Like, let, let's keep that real. Um, and it all started back in 2016 on the song False Prophets. And that's a really good song. I really love it. If you guys have not heard it, go back and listen to it. But that was the first song where he kind of, you know, was going at Ye and talking about, you know, people watching their, you know, no, was that the, no, yeah. People like watching his ego. They don't want to say anything to him. They're watching him like basically fall off the deep end. Um, so he, he was throwing a lot of shots at Ye, but he never said his name. And then in 2019, he dropped Middle Child. And in Middle Child, he was throwing shots at Ye as well. So J. Cole has been throwing subliminals at all these people. He's thrown subliminals at Drake. He's thrown subliminals at Kendrick at Wale, so at a lot of people, but again, it's, it's hip hop, right? So I don't take offense to it or anything like that. That's what you're supposed to, you're supposed to rap and you know, you're supposed to say that you're the best. The only thing that I'm offended with with Cole was that stupid ass apology. So ever since then, he's just germane to me. Cause I think at this point he just doesn't need to rap anymore um, if he's apologizing. So um, he's been throwing shots. So for people saying that, oh, you know, Cole keeps catching strays. No, he's not. People are finally responding to him because he's been throwing subliminals for years. So I think Kanye had every right to say that his music makes the coochie dry. <laughs> that line will forever not be funny. I'm sorry. Because I'm like, he's not lying. I've never, I don't know anybody who's like, yeah, we was banging the J. Cole. <laughs> oh my gosh. Poor Jermaine. So now let's go ahead and talk about this, Taylor. So how long I've been on here? Okay, 48 minutes. So let's go ahead. Let me uh, read some of these super chats and we'll talk about Taylor and Kim. Um, let's see here. B. Erica, or Brika, Brika. Sam 49 says, I've been waiting on this video. I can't wait to hear what you had to say about CB. Can't wait for you to reach a million. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat, sis. Um, Luzita Pedro says welcome back i missed you thank you so much oh they're letting y'all thumbs up the uh super chats now 
Now YouTube trying to turn into Instagram. I'm seeing like six thumbs ups, 11 thumbs ups. When did they start doing that? So now y'all can thumbs up super chats. Okay. All right, YouTube. All these social media sites just stealing from each other. <laughs> All right. So let me see here. Uh, Cat Crazy Lady sent 10 says, hey, T, I lost my job a few weeks ago and I had to start my life over at 57. Please tell me it will be okay. Oh, wow. I'm sorry to hear that. And it will definitely be okay. You know, as long as you, you're here to see another day, your life is definitely not over. Um, and sometimes when one door closes, another one opens. So that chapter may just need it to end and you never know what the future has in store. So definitely, you know what I'm saying? Just, just stay prayed up, stay positive and something better will definitely come along. So thank you. And I hope this stream, you know, brings a smile to your face and kind of helps take you away from just some of the drama that you're going through in your life. So thank you for tuning in today. Um, let me see here. Spicy Mama says, T, it's been a good minute um, since I talked on here, but just know I'm always listening to you on everything. Love you, doll face. Keep it up. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, sis. Thanks for coming through. Uh, C. Johnson, Sim 499 says, ooh, auntie, swoop, ponytail, jean jacket, giving early 2000s vibe. Your hard work never goes unnoticed. Loves you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm bringing it back for the 99s and the 2000s. Girl, you working with some ass shit. You, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't get me started for they flag my stream. Because, you know, we're not allowed to, like, really rap and sing on here. Because YouTube will, like, all the, 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 the record labels are then trying, like, um, take the money. Saying that we're, like, using their music. It's happened before. They'll hit us with copyright. But thank you, sis. Um, let's see here. Love... Some Lada sent 999 says, T, my condolences for you in the Discord loss. Showing some love. Gonna listen to the playback at the nail shop. Waiting to hear your thoughts on CB and Quavo. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Black Girl Hoodoo says, Girl, the way I tripped and fell to this live. I love the hair and the outfit. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, sis. Rona Phil says, I know Offset wasn't about to fight with that shiny shirt on, looking like Prince. It was giving Prince sexy mother effort videos in the parking garage. Yeah, that year at the BET Awards was crazy. Was so, if you guys remember back in 2017, because I was living in LA at the time, it was so much drama. And remember, that was the same um, BET Awards that it was DJ Academics and Joe Budden when they were interviewing the Migos and for some reason DJ Academics couldn't hear and him and Takeoff were kind of going back and forth when he was like, uh, how do you feel getting left off bad and bougie? And Takeoff was like, who got left off bad and bougie? He's like, huh? He's like, you saying I got left off bad and bougie? He's like, huh? Like that was such a weird interaction. And then Joe just gets mad and he just jumps up and then they all jump up and they're ready to fight Joe. So that was like a crazy BT. And then remember Meek Mill, was caught chasing Safari down the street and they had jumped Safari. BT Awards ain't been that lit since, okay? So it was like a lot of fights that weekend. We had Meek and Safari, the Migos and Joe Budden, then the Migos and Chris Brown's entourage. So yeah, that's when BT was lit, child. It ain't been that lit since. Um, let's see here. Jacoby sent $2 and said, hey, I met you at Golden Corral yesterday. Hey, Jacoby. Yeah. <laughs> I be cutting 4K. What's up, Jacoby? I was in. <laughs> yeah, I went to Golden Corral yesterday, uh, you know, Sunday lunch. And so he comes up to me. He was like, Lovely. He, was, he goes, Are you Lovely T? And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> Have my little plate of food, chat. <laughs> and I was like, What's your name? He was like, Jacoby. I was like, Okay, nice to meet you. So it's always fun when I run into my tea sippers. So. Thank you. It was nice to meet you yesterday. And thank you for allowing me to eat in peace. Because <laughs> they know worse than I'm at the Mall of America trying to stuff my face. And then you'll have people like literally turn their chair around and watch. And then they'll come up and be like, are you lovely, T? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just trying to eat. Don't mind me. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's funny. Damn, I can't even creep around my city. I'm getting recognized more and more. I be like low key trying to creep. You know what I'm saying? And I'm always running into a tea sipper now, so it's funny. I guess maybe because we're almost at a million subscribers. So, yeah, but that was fun. So, yeah, nice meeting you. Um, let's see here. Dee Dee Watson says, hey, T, I haven't been feeling too good, but this live is making me better. 
Um, love you, Dante. Love you too, and I hope you get better soon. So thank you for tapping in. Uh, let's see here. Fabby sent 1999 says, Hey T, this is my first super chat. I was letting hold on, I was letting on the old ID discovery, and they covered Andrew's case on the show, on the case with Paula Zahn. It was cool watching them tell his story. Andrew who? Andrew's case. Which Andrew was that? I can't even think of which Andrew that is. But uh, thank you for the super chat. I might have to look that up. Y'all know I stay watching the ID channel, child. I'm addicted. There's a new show I've been watching on Tubi. I don't know why I've been watching Tubi. Like, like I, don't, I really like Tubi now. I've been really on there. But there's a show on there called Text Me When You Get Home. That's, that's my show. Like... Them stories are crazy. So that's a, if you're into the ID channel, definitely watch text me. Hashtag text me when you get home. It's on Tubi. <laughs> um, let's see here. Ranger says, Nati, Meg's mom died from a sickness. Nikki just threw a low blow, but Quavo was being reckless and dragged his nephew into some BS. Yeah, I mean, I see both sides, but what I'm saying is that either way, somebody close to both people, right? Meg was very close with her mom. Quavo and Takeoff were extremely close. And it's just very interesting how, you know, people look at it differently. Um, some people said it was a low blow, you know, with Chris Brown and what he said. But a lot of people said that you shouldn't ever bring death into, you know, hip hop. Like if it's somebody whose family member passed, you're not supposed to bring it up. But what I'm saying is that they didn't say the same thing for Chris Brown like they did for Nikki. Because I don't agree that Nikki should have bought up Meg's mom. I don't agree with that. But I noticed that the energy was different with Chris Brown when he bought up uh, Quavo's situation with Takeoff. So that's all I'm saying. Uh, let's see here. Oh. Ara says, check Spotify. Quavo responded. Hold up, y'all. Let me see. They're saying that Quavo responded. It's not like I can play it, but let me see. I'm not seeing it. What's the song called? Are y'all seeing it on Spotify? Cause I'm I'm not seeing it. And I just googled it online. I don't see anybody talking about it online yet. So I'll I'll look it up and see if it comes up um later. But I'm not seeing it yet. Um, Brandy says, "Hold up, nobody's perfect." With Joy Cole and Missy Elliott was definitely on my slow jams list. Anyways, he looked beautiful. Condolences to your Discord member. Love from Pittsburgh, honey. They, I forgot about Nobody's Perfect. Because we riding, mm, 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 Poseidon. Yeah, that song with Missy, that is a good song. Yeah, I, I would, I would, yeah, I would definitely smash to that. But that came out, what, in like 2012? That came out a long time ago. But I don't like his new stuff. Is there anything smashable in any of his new stuff? But Nobody's Perfect is a dope song. I forgot all about that with him and Missy. Cause we riding, we rocking above Poseidon. <laughs> yeah, that came out a long time ago, but that song, oh, it came out in 2011. Yeah, that's a dope song. I like that song a lot. That's a dope song. I forgot all about that. Yeah, that song is smashable. That song is definitely smashable, but I can't think of like, outside of that song, I can't think of any more. <laughs> I love to call your name. Yeah, yeah, that song. It's, it's like coming back to me now, all the little lyrics. That song is definitely smashable. <laughs> Somebody says DJ Academics has it. Is he playing on his stream? Quavo started it when he dropped that BS with uh, Drop Tinder. Well, no, because Chris Brown had dropped um, a song before Quavo had dropped Tinder. Chris Brown had mentioned him in another song before that song came out. Remember the song Freak? That's what I was talking about earlier. 
he first mentioned it in his song Freak, and then Quavo responded with Tender, and then Chris Brown just bodied him. So I don't know. I'm, I can't listen to it anyways, so I'll definitely look at it um, after this stream because I can't play it anyhow. But hopefully, I mean, does it sound dope? Somebody said it's on Twitter. Okay, let me look on Twitter. Hold on, let me look on Twitter. Hold on, let me put it in. I'm putting Quavo's name in, putting in latest. Okay, here it is. All right, give me, hold on. I like to call you name. Oh, y'all got me singing that song. I have, okay, let me share this tab here so y'all can see this. So this is what um, Academics is saying. He says, I have Quavo's diss to Chris Brown premiering exclusively on live right now. He's talking crazy and take off on the track. So is everybody just going to use AI now and just have, um, you know, dead rappers on tracks now? I would love to hear some of it, but I can't play. It's going to, I don't have uh, DJ Academic Powers. They're going to shut down my stream. I can't play his music while I'm live. They'll shut down my stream, but um. I'm going to definitely have to check that out. He's talking crazy and he got takeoff on there. I'm ready for that. Um, Let's see here. Goddess of Pleasure sent 499 says, Snoop was a pimp when he was famous and he was slanging pure romance toys. Also, the AI is a fake cosign. It's a cheat. Deep fakes are dangerous in my opinion. Mm. Yeah, I think it's very interesting, like, if everybody's going to just start adding AI rappers and dead rappers to like their responses, like I said, I feel like Drake has opened up a can of worms. And so that's what I'm saying. I don't know how I feel about it. Like creatively, I get it because, you know, everybody coins Kendrick, you know, the prince of the West Coast and all that. And he's supposed to be Tupac's replacement. Um, so, I mean, I get creatively why he did it, but I also have an issue with it. I feel like just go into the booth and just spit. Like, I don't need antics. Like, Chris Brown, that's what you call real hip-hop. That's what you call a real diss. He didn't need, you know, a featured artist. He didn't need to be on a song that's already out. He dropped his own song, went bar for bar for a good two and a half minutes, dropped it on the internet, and kept it pushing. And that's just what it is. I, I, I really like Chris Brown's approach, to be honest with you. Um, let's see here. Alexander says, it's my birthday. I just turned 23. I'm finna graduate um, with my BA next Saturday, but I'm a little scared. Um, happy birthday and congratulations on graduating. It's a fishy graduation season. I think that's so dope. There's some people graduating this year. So congratulations to you um, on your new chapter in life. Let's see here. Montana Chanel Senfai says, Twin Cities gang, love the hair. Thank you so much. Shout out to everybody in the Twin Cities. Minnesota's in the house. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Karina Rod uh, Rodriguez says, hey T, any updates on the diddler? Um, I don't have any updates. He seems to be just laying low and hoping that this blows over. And I don't see it blowing over. Um, Keefe D, though, he did get, uh, he's been beat up a few times in prison. I'm hearing that he got stabbed recently. So that's really the only thing I've heard as of late is that Keefe D was stabbed. And people are saying that the diddler paid people to do it. Allegedly. So I don't think he wants Keefe D spilling any tea. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Let's see here. Um, Vacay JTV sent 999 says... Hey, I'm new to the channel and I'm feeling your vibe. One more sub for your Millie. Keep banging salute. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming through and supporting my channel. Um, if you guys are liking the stream, please hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe as well. So thank you guys. Somebody called him Knifey D. Y'all are messy. <laughs> I don't feel bad for Keefe D. Y'all know that because I feel like he put himself in that situation. He had that profit deal. All he had to do was, you know, have a tall glass to shut the fuck up and ride onto the sunset. Everybody knew he did it, right? All he had to do was just ride off into the sunset, but he wanted attention. He wanted to, you know what I'm saying? He wanted internet fame. He was trying to sell his book. 
and he thought shit was sweet and he came back to bite him in the ass so i don't feel bad for him and he had a role in tupac's murder so i the only thing i want for keefe d to do is to just be honest and basically let the world know he said it before but now he needs to say in the court of law that the diddler put him up to it because they're saying that that hit came from the diddler so that's all i want from keefe d at this point so i don't i don't feel bad for anything that he goes through Uh, Robin says, is it the same as K-Dot using deep fakes in his um, video? Well, yeah, I remember that video. Even I thought that video was kind of creepy. But um, I think it's different when you're, like, using Tupac's, like, whole voice and essence. And, you know, rapping with Tupac's voice. I think that's on a whole different level. But, like I said, creatively, I think it was very, very creative. And then the fact that he pulled an eight mile, I think was very, very creative. But for me, I'm just like, I'm just more old school. Just go into the booth and spit. I don't need like an AI version of Snoop and Tupac talking on the track. SB says, I'm tired of AI. I think a lot of people are. And this is just like the beginning. I think, and even the fact that you got so many people online that are like, dropping response disses like after a while i was getting pissed off and i didn't believe any of them because i feel like unless it's coming from like a credible source you know like the artists themselves i'm not buying any of these ai responses it was like a the kendrick response um there were several drake responses then we find out everything is ai and that's the part i feel like it's messing up hip-hop sonically it's just too much like literally anybody can go into a booth now and i can run my voice through a machine and merge it with SZA's voice and Beyonce's voice, and I can sound just like them. So where does where does natural ability and creativity start and end? Because at this point, and we can go back to even auto tune. Like back in the day, you had to know how to carry a tune, and people could walk up to you at the middle of an award show and say, "Oh, you guys are Destiny's Child. Sing something." And you better be on point, you better be on key, and you better be ready to go. When was the last time when we watched these award shows, when was the last time do you really see interviewers going up to artists and saying, sing, sing your latest song? They don't even do it anymore because half of these artists are trash. Half of these girls cannot sing. They have no real stamina. Everything is auto-tuned. They're just pretty, just like Sweetie. She's just pretty. But when it comes to her performance, she's trash. I'm sorry. She's out of breath. She can't dance. So it's like in a minute, that's why I feel like they're trying to get everybody comfortable with AI because AI is going to be their replacement. I mean, you have people like Doja Cat who puts on a, a good performance and she can sing or whatever. But what I'm saying is that a lot of these people on average, they're studio singers. So I think that what they're trying to do is they're trying to get people really comfortable with this whole AI thing. So when they bring you the first official AI rapper outside of FN Mika, it's not going to be as strange. And when you think about it, if we start bringing on a lot of AI rappers and influencers and this whole AI world and we start merging it with, you know, with real artists, then you don't, there's not a lot of risk. You're not going to lose money with the AI version of Drake, because there's nothing salacious for him to get involved in. You're not like the same thing with influencers. A lot of these influencers will be replaced in the future because there's not, there's nothing salacious with the AI because it's somebody controlling it. So they can always be PG. We don't have to worry about them making errors and mistakes and getting caught up in, you know, sexual assault allegations and things like that. So I think that's where the future is going. And I feel like um, they're using two of the biggest artists, you know, like Drake and Taylor Swift, you know, to like just push these different narratives. Cause I just find it very interesting that he mentioned Taylor Swift also on that diss track. So I definitely feel like UMG has their ha hands behind the scenes with a lot of this stuff. But that's just my opinion. Cause yeah, remember AI Drake from last year? The the ghostwriter and that whole little thing, remember, it was like global news. I talked about it on my songwriter's deep dive that I did with Static Major, that I did about Static Major, excuse me. 
But remember that whole AI Drake situation and the AI Drake's music honestly was better than anything Drake had dropped recently. Remember he had the song with Drake in the weekend and UMG and all of those people, they went to go flag it down and they were trying to like, you know, take stuff to Congress about, you know, lightness and how they can stop people from making AI music of their favorite artists. And so isn't it fun? This was just a year ago, a year or so, maybe two years ago when all this was happening. And then we go from having AI Drake and AI Drake is a bad thing and you guys are wrong for streaming the music. They took it down out of all streaming platforms. And then now all of a sudden you have the real Drake coming out with his own version of AI Pac and AI Snoop. Y'all don't find that weird? That he was the first test dummy with AI Drake and now he's pushing AI in his music? Even when he first came out, a lot of people thought his first diss track was AI. Then we found out it wasn't. But I felt like the reason why he put it out like that is because like The Weeknd says, Drake likes to leak a lot of songs. Because think about it, when you leak stuff, if people don't like it, you can just be like, oh, it was a leak. Somebody stole it. It wasn't finished. It wasn't all the way done. So you don't never have to take any type of personal responsibility. He always leaks a lot of stuff first. And then depending on the reception. So if that, if that, if that um, diss track came out and people said it was whack, he'd have just been like, oh, it was a leak. That wasn't real. But because people liked it, all of a sudden, oh, it, I, it was me. I put it out. And he does that a lot. You have a lot of artists who do that now. Well, they're, they're, they'll leak stuff and act like somebody leaked it, but they're really just trying to test the waters. That's why Rick Ross was saying in his um, response to Drake, we don't have to leak shit. When we put stuff out, we mean it. So, yeah. It's very interesting. All right, so let's go ahead. <laughs> Somebody says chat G GTP raps. Mm-hmm. True, he has a lot of SoundCloud bangers from back in the day. Okay, so Jess says he doesn't like Quavo's diss. So it's not that good. Chat rap. Okay, so now let's talk about this last situation with Kim and Taylor Swift. Again, another huge universal UMG artist, Taylor. And she got a lot of um, attention this year from dating Travis um, and them winning the Super Bowl. They claim it's a real relationship, but, you know, child, who knows? Um, so, anyhow, uh, she dropped this song called Thanks, Amy. And it's a response to um, Kim Kardashian. If you guys remember back, I believe it was like 2016-ish, 2017-ish, um, when Kanye dropped a song called I Make That Bitch Famous. I don't know if that's the name of the song, but he was talking about Taylor, um, about having sex with Taylor. And so she was saying that she was shocked and appalled and all this stuff. And then Kim Kardashian um, played a recorded audio of Taylor Swift giving Kanye the okay. But then Taylor later on came out and said that she didn't know the full extent of what she was okaying. But she was attacked for a long time because of that. And Taylor Swift ended up um, taking like a year-long hiatus. Like she just disappeared off of the internet. She was trolled really bad. People kept sending her snake emojis. So she's finally decided to come out with some type of diss. So we're going to watch this news report on it, on uh, Kim and Taylor. So we're going to go ahead and watch this real quick here. Swift dissing Kim Kardashian in her new song. Fans seem to think so. It's just a lot of a lot. Following the release of her 11th studio album, The Tortured Poets Department, the singer dropped 15 additional tracks in the anthology, one including Thank You, Amy, which seems to directly reference her feud with Kim K. The biggest clue, the song name. It has the letters K, I, and M in all caps, spelling out her first name. 
and she also sings the what pain Taylor could be referring to. In 2016, the beauty mogul's ex-husband, Kanye West, put out these lyrics in his song, Famous. I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. Why, I made that famous. At the time, the Grammy winner slammed the track, which led Kim to release clips of a phone call between the two artists that Taylor says were filmed without her knowledge and seemingly confirmed that she gave Ye permission to say her name in the song. I mean, at this point, I'm just over it. Like, yeah, am I annoyed that people try to pin my husband as this bad guy to, like, take advantage a little bit? But at this point, like, I know the truth. Fast forward to last December, Tay recalled the moment with Time Magazine saying, that took me down psychologically to a place I've never been before, which leads Twitter to share their <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, I can't take this country music banjo. My mother says she wishes you were dead. Like, girl, either come with some bars and move the fuck around. Like, this is the most boringest diss track I've ever heard. <laughs> Back to the news article. <laughs> Thoughts on the song. One tweeting, Taylor dropping a Kim K diss track was not on my 2024 bingo card, but I've never been happier. While another writes, Kim K will never forget what she did thanks to Taylor Swift. There's also these lyrics that fans know all too well Kim's daughter North listens to Taylor's music. I think the reason why we turn to music is because, um, you know, we can somehow apply that song to what we're going through in our life. Kim has yet to respond to the track, but Taylor's making it clear she's only coming out stronger. All right, Banjo, the Banjo Slayer. Yeah, next. Uh, I get it. Like, you know, she has a right to, you know, diss Kim. I just wish she would have did it over like an 808 beat. Like, I just, I can't take the Banjo seriously. Just, my mother wish you did. I want to say thank you, Amy. Okay, all right. Tomato, tomato, Banjo, Banjo. <laughs> Y'all are messy with the tomatoes and the band. <laughs> Yeah, just pull out my tiny violin on that one. It was just, it was, I mean, I get it, but it was like, I don't know. I just wasn't expecting like the country. Like just, she went harder in Bad Blood. Like she, you know what I'm saying? She went harder on the track with her and Kendrick Lamar. This was just too, I was fond of sleep and shit. Like, oh shit, I didn't even realize she was talking about Kim. I was so damn bored and tired. <laughs> Banjo head ass. Okay, so now. <laughs> So Kim Kardashian is definitely feeling the wrath of the Swifties, okay? So remember when all the Kim Kardashian fans, I don't know what she calls her fans, um, <laughs> the Kimonites, um, they went to Taylor Swift's uh, Twitter feed. This was back in 2016. They were putting snake emojis. So Taylor was being known as a snake. So now all the Kim, well, all the Taylor Swift fans are going to Kim's social media pages and they're writing, thank you, Amy. And so she has lost over 100K followers as of today. This is breaking news. Kim Kardashian versus Taylor Swift when the Swifties attack. Kim loses 100K social followers. So they're saying Kim Kardashian's social media profile is taking a hit 
in the wake of Taylor Swift dropping a new diss track. The fact that they're calling this song a diss track is so cringy to me because a diss track is supposed to be hip hop. That's what I'm saying. Like music is just so weird now. Like everything is just, you know, a diss and a dig and a, like, this is not hip hop. People are acting like this is on the same level as like a hit em up or, you know, what uh, Drake and Kendrick and all them are going. Like, this is not a diss track. This is just some banjo playing music. She's not even saying her name. Like she still did it like, you know, scary way thank you capital k and then capital i am in amy you could have just been like fuck you kim i mean like if, if we're gonna put it out there if we're gonna call it a diss put it out there stop all these scary little weird banjo subliminals so these are like all the swifties they're going to kim's page and they're writing thank you amy the mother has spoken Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy. Finally, somebody stood up to Amy. Uh, thank you, Amy. Sincerely, the tortured poets department. Thank you, Amy. Uh, you should definitely listen to the song. Thank you, Amy. You should have just apologized like your mom told you to. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> so they are going in right now in Kim's comment section. And, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if she ends up responding. But I think the fact that their daughter is singing her song is a flex. Like, say what you want to, but, like, your daughter knows my music. So I think that alone is a flex. But, yeah, the, the banjo subliminals, like, either you go to, you know what I'm saying, either talk your shit, pop your shit without the, you know, an 808, you know what I mean, and pop your shit towards Kim or move around. I don't like weird subliminals. I didn't like the banjo playing. It was just too much. <laughs> <laughs> it was too much but i think she has a right to call out kim i just wish she did it like in a more direct way and i just hate the fact that people are actually acting like this is a hip-hop record or something like this is some type of you know oh she just you know ethered kim like kim's not even a rapper so i guess child she'd been better off going at kanye because at least kanye makes music i would love to see kanye and taylor go back Somebody said, T, who's Amy? Amy's like the undercover name for Kim. She spells it differently. It's it's A, well, how she spell it? It's like A-M-I-E. Let me show y'all. Yeah, A-I-M-E-E, -E, Amy. So she, she made the song, Thank You, Amy, but the way she spelled it spells out Kim. So on the end of the thank part it's a capital k and then she has a lowercase a and then a capital i and a capital m so she did it kind of clever but it's like okay sis oh snaps money bag mo is in the house i see a bunch of money emojis um miss money bag mo sent 499 dollars and 99 cents thank you so much sis i appreciate you she's always coming through showing love Child, me and you got to go out for lunch. You got to come to my, one of my little events. I got to meet you face to face because she really shows love. She's like the, you better be at my 1 million subscriber party. We know you got the funds to get there. So I, I really hope I get to meet you in person one day because you always come through to my streams and, you know, show so much love and it means a lot to me. So thank you so much. Moneybag Mo's in the building, honey. I love it. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, it's DB Sim 499 says North making TikTok dances to a diss song right now. <laughs> I can see North doing that too. She stays on TikTok. Uh, Tabby Cat 218 sent $20 says Savage Sagittarius don't forget shit. They will hold a grudge and I'm here for the bully takedown. Yeah, you know, and I just wish she did it in like a more hardcore way, but I guess that's me being more of a hip hop fan. Like when I'm being told she dropped a diss, I don't want to fall asleep. Like I want to hear like, you know, I want to hear her going hard. Like, I don't know. I just want to hear like some real lyrical stuff. And she didn't like, you know, in a Taylor Swift way, you know, it's cute. But it's definitely not to me like people are trying to act like it's like a hip hop diss. And it's like, no, it's not. This is a Taylor Swift diss. She's addressing Kim. But I'm glad that Kim and the Kardashians are starting to get their karma because they have 
ran a lot of the industry for years. They've been able to spin the narrative and, you know, make people look bad or good, depending on what side of the aisle you're on. You know, when she was cool with Black China, you know, Black China was everything. The second, you know, uh, Kylie started dating Tyga, then Black China was a villain. So they've had their time to like play media games. So now it's coming back to bite her. It's coming back to bite her. So I don't feel bad for her at all. Yeah, I know Taylor isn't a rapper, but I guess that's just me wishfully thinking like, I just, I, I was just falling asleep. I'm sorry. I just, I, you know, I don't expect her to rap, but I expect it to like, just be like, don't put me to sleep. I don't want to hear banjos in a diss track. <laughs> I don't, like, like, like I said, like, I love the song Bad Blood. And I felt like that, that the beat, the song, the way it was presented, I love that song. Like that went hard. That was more hip hop ish. So, you know, even Shake It Off, like that woke me up. I like Shake It Off, but like this was just like some banjo playing. I don't, I just didn't like it. But she has a right to, you know what I'm saying, to ether Kim Kardashian, she does. But it's definitely not like hip hop or nothing like that. So I said we have over 9,000 people in here. Oh, we do, we have over 9,000 people in here. Please hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. Um, let's see here. Your milk says it's giving, let's give, hold on. It gives Trump, let's go, Brandon. She was like, I think they're saying let's go, Brandon, when they're clearly saying F Joe Biden, but okay. It's so funny how that is. But yeah, so that's that's really all we have today in, in hip hop news and, you know, social media mess. It's just really uh, the drama going on with these folks that went down this weekend, which I loved. I thought... You know, I think this was all good for hip hop. Even Lupe came out. Did y'all see Lupe Fiasco? He was ranting and raving at Coachella. Let me see if I can find that clip before I go real quick. Let me go on to X. Yeah, Lupe also wanted the smoke. I'm like, what year is this? 2018? Like, where the hell Lupe come from? I ain't seen him in a while. But he's one, I mean, he's a dope lyricist. We, we definitely gonna give him that. Let me see if I can find his rants um, at Coachella. Oh, oh, I think I found it. All right, let's watch this real quick in case y'all missed this. So Lupe might enter the battle soon too. Lupe said he ain't scared of none of these dudes. Hear, hear me clearly when I say this and I mean it from the bottom of my heart when it comes to this art. And I quote, I will battle any motherfucking rapper. Child, Lupe said, y'all don't want that smoke. He said, quit playing with him. He is from Chicago. But no, Lupe can actually rap. Lupe was Kendrick before Kendrick even hit the scene. You know, remember everything was about Lupe and food and liquor and kick push. And he got some bops. I mean, he his wordplay is crazy. I mean, he's definitely a, low, a dope lyricist. I remember when he was into it with uh, Royce the 5'9". And Royce can really rap too, you know what I'm saying? He used to be a part of D12. He used to run with Eminem and them. Um, so yeah, Lupe can don't don't sleep on Lupe. So it's gonna be interesting. Somebody put out put out the little skateboard emoji. I remember that kick push. It's gonna be interesting to see if he ends up jumping up in there. And I think Lupe's been kind of wanting to smoke with Kendrick for a while, low key, because he got tired of people, you know, acting like people are literally acting like Lupe is the Kendrick, like Kendrick number two, when Lupe came out first. I never understood that. People would be like, oh, you know, Lupe's like Kendrick. No, Kendrick would be like Lupe because Lupe was here first. But yeah, he's dope though. He's a dope artist. If you haven't listened to his albums and stuff, he has some dope music. But I mean, let's also keep this real. He hasn't been around in a while. So, you know, everybody wants that smoke this year. I don't know what 2024 is like the year of just drama year of reveal like everybody is beefing with everybody it's like just i don't know something in the air like it's just so much drama going on in 2024 so this wasn't on my bingo card either 
Taylor Swift, you know, dissing Lupe coming out of nowhere. I'm like, what the hell is going on this year? But I'm here for it. I want Lupe to drop some shit. Yeah, Food and Liquor 2 was man. Yes, Killer Cam. That was a dope album. So I'm I'm here for anything Lupe drops. Hey Lupe. <laughs> Yes, I'm here for, for the rappers, you know what I'm saying, popping they shit. Because again, we need something to be interesting in hip hop. Hip hop has been so boring. It's really been the females that have really kept hip hop afloat. Y'all can say what y'all want to say about Nicki, Cardi, Sexy Red. It has been the females for the past few years really keeping hip hop afloat. You know what I'm saying? So now the guys are trying to come back with it. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So it's going to be very, very interesting. It is. Let me make sure I got all the super chats. I think I read everybody's. Um, let's see here. I think I got everybody. Yep, I did, you guys. So thank y'all for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and get ready to get up off of here. Um, I'm getting ready to go down. I'm going out of town in a few days. So um, if I can stream while, I, while I'm out of town, I would definitely try. If not, I'll just, you know have some other content for you guys, but I'll, I'll put out some more stuff this week, but I'll kind of be busy this weekend, but I will keep everybody posted. So thank you guys for tuning in. Let me go ahead and um, put my outro, child. Thanks for watching. Hold up, let me loop it. There you go, there you go. With my song, with my song. Bye, y'all.